have you ever thought there is more to life than what you have learned or seen or know or what you've been told? And that's important. That's what they're talking about because there, yes, there is more to life than what you see. And they said, it's not just by what you see with your eyes, but they're saying, thank you. Oh my God, we're going to go off into one now. I don't want to look at conspiracy theories at all. But what they're looking at is that how we've been shaped and formed on our planet, how we've gone through life, uh, thinking in a certain way, thinking that some people have come to me and sort of said they think they've been punished or they think that um, they're meant to struggle. And they just, one of the guys said, oh, utter nonsense, this is Yoda. William Smith, utter nonsense, you're not meant to struggle. Um, some humans think they're meant to struggle. Some hear the stories of their families saying, uh, don't get, get above your station. Um, you know, don't think you can become a professional. Don't think you can go off and study. Don't think you can do this. And the family members, thank you, and friends, they just said, can sometimes keep you small or in your structure or in your box. And also the society that you might live in. So whether you are, whatever society, whatever culture you might live in also can keep you in your box to some degree, some degree into your structure. And what happens is we just end up living the same old story over and over again in our heads, thinking either, you know, me as a child being dyslexic, and I'm still dyslexic as an adult, that's not gone away. But as a child being told that you're stupid and placed into the corner and, you know, being told that you're on the table that the thick children go and sit on. <laughs> right, God. So you can imagine that was going over in my head and coming from parts of my life uh, story as being quite poor and uh, the child that had secondhand clothes and when it wasn't fashion, <laughs> they weren't upcycling then <laughs> with holes in the sleeves and the cuffs and everything else. So you started thinking you are a certain person and then you end up being with uh, individuals that see more of that reinforce it, going into relationships that weren't serving me. And I hear that from a lot of my clients as well. So repeating constantly that how I was seeing myself, how my family saw their life, how you can't go above your station. You know, we're laborers, we're builders, we're this, we're cleaners, we're whatever it is, whatever it is, or however you see yourself. And then all thinking, no, I come from a professional background, I must go into a professional job. And what happens is you can stop yourself from exploring other opportunities uh, by being creative and going off to, to do different things, whatever it is. And I know uh, a lot of clients who come to me feel that they're stuck, where they feel that they have to stay in the same on the same track as their family or friends or culture or society. So thank you. They said there has been moments and they can hear that too. My guides are saying there has been moments when they've heard individuals saying there must be more to life than this. When you're in that 3D world, living that job of nine to five or paying the bills or getting stuck or those uh, individuals being stuck in constant time loop of repeating patterns of behaviors in relationships looking at relationships saying why am I still meeting the same type of person you know why is that not changing and my guides they're pretty strict and they're doing this again my Yoda's sort of coming in and, and that's Zachariah by the way so it doesn't like being called Yoda I just have to make sure you know that Zachariah is turned around it's just I'm trying to give a description of what it looks like Zachariah is sort of saying that you know you want a different relationship you need to be different in the first place so you're attracting like for like so where you are on your journey it's about you looking at internally where you are, what's happening to you, what's happened to you as well. And by looking back, that are the bread, they are the breadcrumbs all the way back, showing you your life journey and where things need to be changed if you want change moving forward. So if you want changes moving forward, you have to look at the changes that you can make and see where you have come from in the first place. But it's all about the signs. It's all about you knowing that there are, um, thank you, exterior signs that are being presented to you. Those signs, those messages. Um, thank you. They said, thank you, uh, Zachariah sort of said, some people walk around like the horse with the blinkers on and only look in one direction. You're not looking around you enough uh, because sometimes you don't want to step out of your uncomfortable zone. So a lot of humans just tend to keep their head down and go that way and think there's only one way of doing it and not realize actually there are many other ways of looking at how you walk forward in life but you keep getting stuck okay so Amy if I came to you and I sort of said um 
if we look at some of those things that humans do, if we look at uh, what, you know, what signs could they be missing or what are the repeating patterns or if we look at your own life or any examples that you have that maybe haven't seen or realised it looking back, if that makes sense. Yeah. So looking backwards for me. So what? hello, everybody. Um, it's lovely to be here. So, so many, so many. And on my journey, it was like they were throwing little pebbles at me at first. And I'm not noticing the signs over there kind of going like this. Not, it's not this way, because actually you're feeling unsatisfied within you. You're not feeling good. You've put out to the universe. I didn't know it was the universe then. I just, you know, said the words. It was like, I don't want it to be like this. I don't want my relationship to be like this. I don't want my work to be like this. I'm not satisfied. And then when it all starts falling apart, it's like, oh my God, why is this happening to me? Do you hate me? Um, is kind of how it was. But relationships was definitely the bigger arc in my life. And it's only through looking backwards, as you've said, joining the dots, that I realized the healing that I needed to do in me yeah. to be able to have the relationships that I really wanted to have because I was externalizing it. Yeah. So it was more outside in and thinking all of these people are showing up and they hate me and it must be something about me. But ultimately it was that that's how I was treating me. So everybody that came into my life treated me like I treated myself. Yeah. And I really needed to see that because that's why the relationships get kept getting going wrong. I was in codependent relationships. I was in toxic relationships. I was in abusive relationships, but I wasn't seeing it. That's the biggest thing. It's about it's about noticing those signs because they just said, thank you, right, Yoda. I'm sorry, not Yoda. Zachariah, my God, he's going to murder me today. I can see it. Oh, it's been a long day. Bear with me. <laughs> Zachariah is still doing this with long fingernails and everything. When it is, they sort of twitch like a cat's ears every so often when you're when he's listening to individuals. And uh, <laughs> I just got I got told off because I said, you haven't even introduced Amy and what she does. And I'm like, OK, so Amy's one of our intuitive therapists and counsellors at Odyssey and the work that she does is amazing helping people to get out of a situation or to look forward and to look at those self-limiting beliefs so Zachariah is telling me that I need to have said that so I do apologize <laughs> okay so Zachariah is sort of saying he's been a teacher on the planet earth uh, many hundreds ago hundreds of years ago um, and I remember actually a, a long time ago I was in a cave with him it was, it was uh, some sort of meditation I had and I remember actually there was I knew him as I was alive back then and vice versa whatever anyway so I don't want to explain that but that's what Zachariah just said so uh, what Zachariah is sort of saying that uh, humans need to understand that they're not um comp not to compartmentalize them and still cannot can't understand even now hospital care of how uh when you go into hospital you go see a heart surgeon over there you go see someone there with their bones and not even their bones you might see someone for the neck there and shoulders there and that actually happened to me recently I did my shoulder in and i said i hurt my neck at the same time during an accident so uh, we don't look after necks and I'll say but it's still part of me um, and I remember my team laughing thinking this is ridiculous preposterous um, because it's like the same thing as what we do on our planet the way we see ourselves we think the mind is here the body's there and the soul is something very different but it's not it's about now as we move forward it's about combining everything and realizing it's all connected now if I look back at the, the, my story if I look back at the near-death experience when that happened, I remembered, and I didn't really pay much attention. Now, I'm not saying this is going to happen to anybody else, but I'm just saying I wasn't paying attention. All I know, I was in a very unhappy relationship. My children were very young, and I just kept on saying, something's got to change, something's going to change. I was sending it out there. It was almost like casting it out like a spell. It's like the affirmation. It's like manifesting. I was sending it out there. Something's got to change, something's got to change. And I remember praying at that time wasn't religious but I remember praying so saying something's got to change something's got to change well holy moly <laughs> it did change it was like near-death experience of knocking me down and dying for those you know those minutes whatever it made me then look back when I look back now that was one of the signs of the messages but when I look back even further before the accident happened there were other signs and other messages I was not hearing or seeing them because of my brain where it was blinkered because I was so unhappy in the relationship I couldn't think outside of the box so the idea is to look in the box and to see what's around it, inside of it and on the outside. So seeing those signs. It was funny, I was sitting here and I was, you know, writing and I was asking them and they said, well, don't forget that that other accident you had. And I was like, I, but I didn't have the accident. I said, yes, because you listened to your gut feelings. I was just looking back. 
in 1988. I remember I was running late. I was running late to get the train from, to get from, it was in Balham, to, this is in London, from Balham to Clapham Junction to do a change to go to Kingston or somewhere like that. And I remember I was running late and I remember, I couldn't remember the year and I've just checked, it was 1988. There were three trains that collided <laughs> and um, there was 13,000 passengers and 35 people died. And I was like, oh, oh my God. And that day I missed, I missed the bus going to Balham and I was really angry. And this is what some of us do. We don't realize when things happen, you know, we miss the bus or we run out of milk and we end up going to that shop and we end up bumping into that person or that person in the supermarket. We get so angry with like missing the bus or whatever it is. We don't realize the universe is trying to orchestrate something else around us. It hears us. It feels us. Your emotions, your feelings, the thoughts you have in your head about wanting to make changes. It's all internally within your physical form, but also the energy is being radiated out. And that's what happened with the universe. It feels that energy. So already, if I look back at that period of time, I again was unhappy. I was unhappy working for that company, unhappy. You know, I was in a real bad way. Did I listen to the signs and messages? No, because I didn't know about guides. I didn't know about how the universe worked. And the only thing that saved me was literally, thank God I did miss that bus. Because otherwise, I may have been on that train. And that was a time I would have catched train 8.13. I remember thinking, oh, my God. And even today, when I get a train and I go near there, I get sort of that feeling like, oh, my God, that sort of deja vu feeling of, you know, if I had been on that train, what would have happened? So we're all receiving signs and messages, but it's about being open to receive them, to see them around you. So there's there's those sort of messages, those um, okay, thank you. They're talking about subliminal. There's also, okay, thank you. And um, they were just saying to me, also the subliminal messages that you all receive daily, you know, in your advertising, all of you are receiving it. You know, if you're walking down the street, you're seeing posters or you'll hear it on the telly, you're all receiving messages. Now, these messages are not just from the universe. They are messages that are sent to you from the environments that you live in. So they said, be mindful of what feels right for you. So about using your intuition, whether that's your gut feeling or your body, how it's feeling. Okay, thank you. They sort of just said to me that, you know, by being mindful in certain environments, you know, now I go to the supermarket, I pick up whatever it is, if it's pasta, whatever it is, and I feel into the food that I'm about to pick up and to put into my basket. When I feel into it, is my body going to like it? Does it fit with my body? Does it feel right with my body? And by doing that, I either get a yes or a no feeling. But the more that you guys practice it yourself of tuning into your own physical form of being mindful, how you're feeling, checking in with that, you know, I'm feeling down or I'm feeling happy or, you know, whatever the feeling or thoughts come up or thank you, they just said also relationships with others. By being aware of the relationships that you intermingle with, family or friends, how do they feel? How do you feel afterwards? Do you feel drained by the individual? Do you feel nourished? Do you feel energized? Tune in, feel into your body, work with your natural intuition. It's all about looking at where you're at on your journey. Now, the other thing they just said, and they will come back to you, Amy, sorry, they just said, there was, I was in a job at the hospital and I remember I worked there for four years and I had to get up and do shifts. So, you know, sometimes it was early shift, have to get up at half three, get there for about 4.30. And I remember in, in winter, it was, I hated it so much. There was a reason why I did it, but I had to do it that particular time. And then doing shifts where I start in the afternoon at one o'clock and finish about nine or 10 o'clock in the evening. And sometimes the next day being, get, going back there again at four o'clock in the morning. I remembered I applied for over 100 applicants, 100 different jobs, and I didn't get one of them. But in my heart of hearts, there was something saying to me that actually it was time to me to leave the job, and it was for me to set up my own business. But my brain kept on getting in the way by saying, oh, are you going to be able to make it work? <clears throat> so what they're trying to say is that you've got to separate your mind chitter chatter and work more with your intuition to work more with what your heart is telling you to do. 
So if I'd listened to my heart straight away, I would have been able to go straight into doing my own business. Well, of course, 100 jobs later or 100 like waiting for an interview, not one interview came up and I was so qualified for all of those. But it was deep inside, I felt that it was something I needed to be doing for myself, as in self-employed, working my, for my, my own self. And I kept on putting it off because I was so focused on what was going on for me in my head, thinking I needed to work nine to five, not that it was nine to five, and I needed to earn money to pay my bills. And that's what's going to be happening this year. We did an astrology conversation the other day, Jill Loftus and myself, and we're talking about the energy shifting on the planet right now with the astrology and how this is going to be the year that you make those decisions, that you've got all the energies that you need to move you in that place, in that position. Does that make sense, Emmy? they just said? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Actually, while you were saying that, it was coming up for me that it's really, really important to start looking at what do I believe and why am I believing it? Like, where did those beliefs really come from? Why do I believe that work has to be like this? Why do I believe that relationships have to be like this? Why do I believe that I have to live my life like this? Who gave you those beliefs? Because it's in the beliefs that we create our story about how we might have to be. So it's really, really important time to go, okay, what what am I believing? And is that really my belief? Does that really resonate with me? Because that's, for me, it was really about I was living the life that other people wanted me to live and society had sort of dictated life kind of should look like this. And I'd seen my mum, for example, stay in an abusive relationship. So I, I normalized that. I believed that that's how it looked. So for me, that first step was really like, why am I believing all of these things when they're not resonating and they're not feeling good within me? Why am I pushing myself like you? Actually, I had a when I had my own businesses, I thought that that was my mission and I'd found it and it's amazing. I'm working with children and young people, you know, it's what I was supposed to do. But it got to a point where I started to hate it. And then I started to have really bad experiences with schools and other organizations I was working with. I didn't take the universe was going, well, you said you don't want to do it anymore. So we're showing you these experiences to go get out of this. But I really had to sit with what I believed because I thought that would be a failure to walk away from those things. And because I didn't listen, the universe just was like, it all just crumbled in its own way. So it was about really sitting with myself and going, no, what do I really want? What do I really desire? What's going to make my heart sing? And because I wasn't used to that, because nobody had ever said to me when I was young, you know, this is life is about you flying and doing what you want. It was more about doing what you need. Um, I'd never really looked at that. So I didn't really know what I wanted. It's interesting you're saying about your child because I'm sitting here and I'm just listening to them because they were just sort of saying, in the childlike mode, when we are children, we actually see more. They're just saying the magic of life is very different. When you're a child, you see more. So they are saying that's why some of like, as you become the adult or as you move on, there's the fantasy films that kick in in a way to distract you or to take your mind off of what's going on as the adult in the 3D world. So they all go into the creativity. So they said that the creativity is what will also bring you back to now and actually the expansion of yourself. Now, they're just showing me, they're just saying, many of you that are hearing this or here now in our audience, there's been those um, moments as a child that you, in a way, lost yourself in in a sense of, lost yourself in the adventure so what they are showing me is the children who believed in fairies and angels and everything else there are children that are sitting here now they said in the adult form that are listening to this they actually saw those sparkles of light or flashing of light or what they thought they saw but when they came to see and saw and said to an adult the adult turned and said no there's no such things so they are showing me there, there are many children sitting in this audience now, shaped as adults, but actually you did see. And a lot of you questioned it, or a lot of you were so excited that you would have gone off to those adults around you. And actually they said, no, there's no such thing. Now, they're also saying to me, there are many in the audience that are hearing this, that when they're on their life journey, and when they're walking around, they're picking up and sensing stuff in their environment and they want to say that you are correct 
So there will be echoes of information that are energy echoes in environments. So some of you might have in your mind, oh, I must be going crazy or this can't be true or, um, you know, well, why am I thinking this? Why am I getting this feeling of pins and needles or my hair or my arms going up? They are saying that some of you are correct, that you are actually experiencing an emotional echo of an imprint that happened. So they said they want to clarify what they mean. So they're talking about there has been moments that many of you have walked in different areas that either buildings or locations you might feel that that feeling that sensation or an imagery or something comes into mind and almost think that you're imagining it but the emotions of what happened of an experience has been implanted it has been overlaid on the area that you've walked in so they're saying this because somebody needs to hear this so they're saying that you are correct what you have been feeling is correct when you walk into that room and you feel that there's something that's not quite right, that's your gut feeling, that's your natural intuition as you had as a baby, that something's not quite right, that you are sensing. You are sensing and picking something up. You are correct. Some of you had those imaginary friends. Yes, there's more to life than what you see. Those imaginary friends were real. But how are you going to prove it to others? But only you will know yourself. Thank you. They said some of you go outside, you seek approval or confirmation for what you are seeing because you are not too sure yourself. And some of you have then been told, this is nonsense. There's no such thing as the imaginary friend. It's just your imagination. And that's the damage they said that's been done. That's the damage that's been done to many children. They said they have bared witness. They have seen many of you children as you were. We know we have adults here as in the adult shape and form that we see. But many of you have been told information. And then when you tell those grandparents the stories that you've heard, the Peter Pans, the, the Disney, whatever the story is, when you then go and you tell your adults, your parents, your caregivers, and they said, no, this is incorrect, this is wrong, you then you have believed it because they have been told when they were growing up that it's not true. So they are repeating the cycle by telling you this. So for those who feel the feeling of you may have been there in the past, the deja vu, those feelings that there is more to life, you are correct. Those of you who walk in nature, and feel connected to nature, you are correct. You're hearing information. You're receiving information. Thank you. They they needed to say that. I don't know why, but there's sort of there's some in the audience here that they just want to make sure that they know that you went to those caregivers. They know that you said, I saw this, I saw that, and they are giving you confirmation. You did see that. You were there. You did see the sparkle in the light. You did feel that presence at the end of your bed this isn't haunting or anything evil or nasty but it just is that individuals there it may be those things that catch you at the corner of your eyes or you're walking along and then you'll see a message or um, I don't know why they're just giving me a piece of lego like a lego uh, figurine I don't know what that is right now but they're giving me a lego fi figurine of like um I don't know yeah, I don't know if it's Star Wars, like um, with the light thing, I don't know what it's called, but they're just showing me that now. Um, and there are messages that are being placed out there by those loved ones who are trying to say, yes, there is more to life. We've seen it. We, we can feel it because we don't have restrictions anymore. That's interesting. They've gone off into one. Okay. So, Amy, how can people really uh, see those things how can they um, how can they help themselves how can they become more aware of what's going on around them how can they help themselves move forward what can they do get very very present in the shortest way probably. like really it's a practice for me it's presence practice because nothing can change if we're living through the past all of the time so it's really about slowing down. In the first instance, it's about creating that commitment and making that decision that I want to do this for me because I deserve to do this for me. 
And then it's really about starting to get very, very present with yourself, starting to build that relationship with you in the moment and allowing the space to really be curious about yourself and who you're being and why you're being because it's fulfilling a story at the moment. It's fulfilling in your mind what it is you tell yourself about who you are and your limitations and what I can and what I can't do. So if we can start to get really present and that takes even a couple of minutes a day as a starting point, feel into where you are right now, feeling into your body, connecting to your heart space, just taking that moment. And if you struggle with meditation, I used to really struggle with meditation. But it's not about I have to clear myself of the thoughts, get a journal, put the journal in front of you, sit there for like five minutes and time it and just notice what's happening, the thoughts that are coming up without any judgment. And for me, it is about connecting to that child. What does that child need? Where is, because that's where the healing really is. Put the journal in front of you, notice what's happening after the five minutes, just write it down, but without judgment, without kind of going, I have to have an opinion about this. It's not about that. It's just about witnessing where I am right now. Like you said at the beginning, it's really about understanding where you came from. So you can start to understand where you really want to go. So it's really slow down and start to live in this moment. And there's so many practices that we can do. So if you're going out in nature, it's like, I try to search for everything that I can see that's green or certain birds because it busies the mind and I can come out of the mind. So it's really about doing it very tenderly and kindly because this is not about repeating the patterns from childhood of why are you being so silly? The same thing you were saying, right? This doesn't exist and that doesn't exist. But you have to get present to be able to come out of that mind and open your heart to the possibility that there's something different. They just said something, and it was interesting, you were talking and they sort of said, um, okay, they they like what you're saying. And they also said they, they, they wanna put their finger on it. And it's interesting, Zachariah's long finger that I've got here. And he sort of says, we like the energy of the childlike. We like the energy f to go into the childlike, to splash in those puddles, to make those snowballs, those snow angels. We like the energy of the childlike. The childlike energy is very different. It's light, fuzzy, and very fast. And they said, watch when you go into the childlike mode. When you go into the creative childlike mode, watch what happens, What watch what changes around you. Look what happens. Thank you, they just said, because your energy of, being the chitter chatter of the mind is creating your world you are seeing only what you are seeing from the mindset of where you're at so by changing your mindset by looking at what you are seeing you're only going to see it by going into the childlike mode of splashing in the puddles with your wellington boots by playing with the leaves uh, by meeting with friends and being joyous they said what happens is you're shifting your energy it makes it easier for us to come in for you to receive the messages okay thank you that makes so much sense I know as a medium when I'm talking to individuals before I have a session I really bring up my energy so that I go into that mode so then it's easier for spirits just to move through the vow just to communicate they don't have the heaviness of the physical form when you have your physical form your head where your head's at you weigh yourself down because of the stories that you've been telling yourself since childhood you know everything you said that this is magical this is fantasy world you know pretend you're a knight in shining armor or that princess or whatever it is that you want to see that yourself or you're a spaceman going off to the moon and create the imagery adults don't tend to do that and that's where you're creating the block so they said get into your creativity get into your childlike mode so that then you can work a lot quicker and also the manifesting is very false because it attracts that like for like when you're in that high frequency of energy you'll start to see the world in a different way okay thank you they said and watch what happens around you nature behaves in a different way with you birds come in the trees sing to you. You'll notice the flowers. It's nature that will keep showing up for you. Thank you. They said you'll see those signs a lot quicker when you're out and about 
there's a bus that has a message for you. Read that bus sign. See that that message is for you. Start seeing those signs. But go into that mode of being childlike. They just said, get out of your heads and start seeing what's around you. Very, very important. Thank you. That they're excited because there's this feeling now that um, more and more people are opening up energetically. And so it's changing the energy frequency on the planet. It's helping the shift on the planet. It's helping people to receive the information. They just said they're intrigued by your dreams. And many of you, that what you are dreaming, we are moving in and out. The dreams are just a dimension of yourself. So you're visiting different locations within your dreams. And many of you have begun that imagery and astral traveling, which some of you used to do as a child. They're talking about there was many children we used to have to bring back because many of you had so much fun. And the imagery they're showing me is like the Peter Pan in the night shirts and flying off and stuff. So they said, we, we observed many of you, many of you we brought back like kites. We have to tether you back to your physical form. So they've enjoyed doing that. And many of you now, you have just anchored yourself to the adult form. You, many of you are um, not free flowing. Many of you, thank you, they said, they're listening to your minds. Many of you get stuck in the worrying about the bills or a relationship or uh, some, somebody talking about carpets or their furniture. This is utter nonsense, they said. Your material world around you, many of you get stuck and even looking at your wallpapers. They said your devices, and this is Zachariah doing this, your devices as in your phones. It's interesting, many of you decide to spend more time on your phone than you do communicating with the person that is sitting with you. Um, surely you would spend more time looking at that individual having that contact than rather sitting there on your phones. Many of you, your phones take you to many parts of the world and, and some of you envious of some other people that are living a certain way of life. But we must tell you there are many who are not living that lifestyle. It is just literally like a filter on their life okay they've gone all over the place amy i hope we are covering what we're right. to cover <laughs> i love it they're just coming in <laughs> was there anything amy from um what we need to look at before we open up the floor and and uh, ask if there's any uh conversation or questions or anything that people would like to look at while they're here yeah i i guess it's about getting serious about you and your journey as and it is about stepping into the playfulness the playfulness is really really important and interestingly today like I was nervous about this happening today I've had a lot of changes in my life and literally what you said I went into the garden and the little robin came and it sat there and it just sat there and it sat there and it sat there and I know that that's like from my grandma and my grandpa but again you have to be present to really notice these things and step into the innocence of the child because the child has the innocence they're not like projecting stuff onto every experience they have because it's the understanding that like everything you're living is essentially meaningless until you start attaching meaning to everything so it's like how can you every single day bring some level of play yesterday I was walking and I threw a massive pile of leaves and it was like when I was a kid I was not allowed to do anything like that and it was so much fun fun to invite my child forward and let her lead the way and it's like allow your child to step forward and really allow the child to play every single day even if it's for a few minutes because that does get you out of your head it does connect you to your heart and it allows you to experience things you won't let yourself experience in your adult self so it's really important to do that. It's funny, as you're talking, they just turned somebody here in the audience had wet socks at one point. So a parent told them off for stepping in puddles with their shoes. They should have had Wellingtons on. So something about not stepping into puddles because they don't like their feet to get wet. So they just said this. But yes, the, there is that looking at what the mind is holding on to still, which is the storage what storage they said it's a bit like the iCloud they normally mention this the iCloud where it's updating your software it's time to up they said because humans only tend to understand this information now if we say in the words that you're used to so updating the software updating the old package that used to be there 
And that's why I know that you're going to be um, doing your group thing tomorrow as well, where you're going to be talking about this, but it is about updating the software, it's looking at how we can make some changes uh, to how we are uh, living our lives and stuff. Thank you. Um, so they said, by being the child now, as in the adult, first you have to offload everything you learned before. Some of you think that this information has to stay there forever. And they said there are many of the humans at the moment that don't know what day of the week they're on or what time they're on because they are time traveling in the sense of looking at all these other problems that are going on and issues and not being centered and not being grounded in their environment and where they are right now, Lisa said. So yes, they said, can they have more of you that are in the child-like mode so then they can then send the information more into to individuals that you're receiving and to work more with your intuition so that if you have that nudge, you can then go off and do it. But they said, yes, there is so much more to life than what you see. But some of you are holding yourself back. One of them was just turned and said, one of my guys just walked in. It's really interesting. These are like, you know, like you get these old um, aunties or uncles, someone's going to complain on it when I say this, but when you get an old family relative and they walk in and one's just walked in and turned and said, and what you say about yourselves when you look in the mirror. <laughs> I'm too fat, I'm too thin, I'm too young, I'm too old, I'm too this, I'm too that. And they said, again, you are telling yourselves this is what you think you are. Turn it around. Look at the beauty in you instead, they said. There are many of us on this side that are craving to get into a body as in they wish they were here and they've passed over to the other side. So while you are here, why not live your lives? Look at your bodies and bless your bodies and say, thank you for my blue eyes. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. Whatever it is. And to keep focusing on what you have, your gift. You are physically here on your planet right now. You are able to enjoy. You are physically able to move, physically able to eat. Sorry, one of my guys just said, I can't eat those chips anymore. So the potato chips are Chris. <laughs> one of them just said, I have, I cannot taste. I do not have the taste buds. So they just said, I, one of them just said, I have to wait for the invitation for my family member to step forward before I can taste. You have the ability to taste, to see, to smell. And many of you wasting this opportunity. Many of you are just thinking your life away and not understanding that you are here now. Enjoy. Because when you get over this side, you do not have the experiences of tasting. You see, but you do not taste. So while you are here, why would you not taste? Eat those foods. Eat those potato chips for me. This lovely lady, she feels like she's Greek or something. She's like Mediterranean. I absolutely love her. I don't know where she's come from, but she's come in. And uh, she feels as if like, in her lifetime she enjoys cooking and eating and food and everything. And she's really come in and she's like, I, I wasn't expecting this. But she just said, you know, they are missing. They are missing out on the qualities of life so i love that okay thank you um let's open up to the audience they hear if there's any questions any thoughts that come in and they can assist you we've got a couple of guides here that would like to speak and if they can help you with anything any thoughts that you have they would like this conversation they said they like having conversation it's boring on the other side because it's all the things big things they like to communicate with the humans so if anyone in the audience wants to and if you don't you don't have to Hey, I'm glad you said about the expense that you're having because there's a few people that have emailed me recently. I still get quite a lot of emails of people reaching out and that's been a, a couple of things that have come up, up for those individuals that they're very empathic, they're very intuitive and now they're doing the energy work and now they're learning about energy work. They feel that they're so open that they're receiving everything. Around the world, they're receiving information and in sense it makes them super sensitive. And I will always go back to that. The idea is that you have to have your guides and your gatekeeper in place, that you close down your energy. You're, yeah, we are human beings and we're, we are souls and we're supposed to be enjoying all this information and receiving it and stuff. But we also have to live in the 3D world. So our soul is placed within this vessel. It needs to be experienced and I think that we're going through as the human being first and foremost, because that's your job to yourself right now is to be the human being on the planet, human being on the planet. The soul has to experience things. And the way the soul experiences things is by the human experience. 
So yes, it's great to be open and to receive everything, but there's times that it has to be shut down. There's times that it has to be closed off. And that was what I was talking about earlier about the soul development course. It's literally to help people to understand how to open up, how to close their energy down, to see what's going on, how to live in the 3D world with that feeling of having the energy that's bursting through you. And there are moments that the energy can feel actually, in some people, some people have contacted me and it can feel like a panic attack as such, or the butterflies in the chest. There's that that feeling and then being woken up constantly during the night or the way the dreams are happening. There are ways of closing it down when you don't need it. Um, and there are moments that you don't need it. There are moments where opening up and being aware of the energy, being in nature is absolutely fantastic, you know, manifesting, living that life. But there's also those moments that you need to sort of manage it in a different way. Now, for you individually, they're sort of saying, yes, to be in your body is really important because they're sort of saying, some people also wish away their lives. So they wish they were doing something or they wish they were doing something else. They're not saying that for you particularly, but they're sort of saying it is important to be in your physical form. Thank you. They said sometimes individuals feel uncomfortable in their physical form. It might be due to having pain in the body. So they step outside the body. I know that I've, I've worked with um, clients who've been raped and they've actually um, disassociated they've actually their soul has moved over to one side out of their body so they don't feel it so this is very important that the soul is experiencing the everyday human experiences so by being mindful the mindfulness technique about feeling your feet feeling your physical form keep reminding yourself every so often to feel your physical form that way what happens is your body becomes your structure your vessel it embodies your soul and you're not so open and so out there because if I lived a life like that where and I did in the early days when I was um, really experiencing everywhere I walked everything I was you know I mean now I go no I don't want to experience that if I walk into a pub you can imagine if it's a couple hundred years old everyone's communicating with me I remember walking into a junk shop antique shop secondhand shop whatever you want to call them and every item I picked up was whispering to me, telling me their story, telling me who they belong to and what their life was and everything. You cannot live a life like that. We have to be placed on the planet Earth. We're having a human experience. Our soul doesn't sense anything outside of the physical form. So our soul comes into the physical form. So it senses just like we heard from grandma. I don't know who this grandma is, but she just said, she cannot taste anything now unless she comes through, forward and through into, uh, you know, when a relative contacts or they work with, uh, you know, physical medium, she gets to taste through the taste buds again, those chips. So for us as humans, we are here to experience this moment as well. But we've got to learn to close down sometimes and open up when we want to. So it's us being in control. It's about us managing our energy. So as I said, when I go out, if I'm going out for a drink or I'm going out with friends, I tend to uh, I'd be in my physical form and say, right, I'm physically here. I'm not exposing myself. I'm not opening up energetically. Otherwise, you know, it will be a nightmare for me. Does that answer your question? If I think me personally going through my childhood, I couldn't, I didn't want to go into my heart space because I'd had so much abuse. So I didn't want to go into my heart space. I shut myself down to everything. Um, I had everything going on in my head in the sense of what was happening to me. You know, sexual abuse, domestic violence in the family. We, I was homeless. We had no food at some point. Um, I did see spirit from a very young age and stuff. Um, I'm working with animals. I could hear them talking. But being in a family where I was told at the time I was just crazy, not to mention it to people, I sort of shut down. And also I learned that, you know, opening my heart as in wanting to be loved, I was always sort of, once I loved somebody, they would always go either through death or they'd abandon me, leave me, whatever. Um, so I couldn't be in my heart space. I found it really hard to go into my heart space. So I was in my head even as a child and trying to watch out. And uh, it's like having an animal that you've been kicked. You're always going to watch everything around you. You're high, you know, highly sensitive to like you might get beaten again or you've got to run away again. So I was really in my head of trying to protect myself at that time. Now, the, the great question about what you were saying about some of the mediums, you know, um, what you who you mentioned um, about the head injury. For me, uh, it's interesting. Um, when I had my near-death experience, my head wasn't injured at all, thankfully. And when I had the second out-of-body experience and near-death experience, my uh, lung collapsed. 
um, that's when I came across an angel and I was like, I don't believe in angels. And then when I actually came across an angel, I was like, oh my God, there are such things. The third time the near-death experience, I went on the operating theatre, my heart stopped. I didn't injure my head. My seizure that I had uh, February the 14th last year, 2023 or 2022, I had a massive seizure and I had a head bleed. Now, what I learned from that was that my head was being rewired. So in a way, there was changes that were happening internally within my head. I needed to be taken out for a while um, in a sense of when it rewired, um, it needed to have some changes. Now, medically, when I saw the um, surgeon, neurosurgeon, when I went through a CT scan, originally there was the brain bleed, you could see that, and there was damage. When I later went back, uh, I'd been doing some work, so I went back to doing yoga to get my balance because uh, I'd had a mini stroke. I couldn't walk and I couldn't talk. Um, uh, I did yoga, uh, learned Italian, um, just loads of bits and pieces that I were doing. Oh, roller skating, that was it. I'm trying to remember. So I did roller skating. It was like rewiring my brain on the balance side of things. I knew I had to physically do something. But I had a lot of information wiped out as well so there's a lot of things i don't remember what happened even my children my adult children say do you remember we do this do you remember we do that i went no it's gone so for me that was my only head injury i had now with the other mediums i'm not sure about them themselves but i literally through having the human experiences of learning to love learning to like myself brought me back into my heart center. Having animals around me brought me back into my heart center because I knew that I could love my animal. My animal wasn't going to betray me. So for me, what activated my heart center was to be around animals. And so it made sense me becoming a zookeeper at the age of 18 or 19. I could connect animals. And I didn't even know that I could heal animals until my hands started getting hot and I was looking after animals that should have died and they didn't die and everything else. So I didn't even realise that till later on in life when I became a Reiki master, I had healing from a young age. So it's about coming out of the head, the logical, practical, that sort of side of things, where some families were born into, it's almost like we're trained to think logically because of what's going on in our family life. And it's about learning what can bring you into your heart. And when they talk about being childlike, it is about going into the heart centre because that's your soul centre. That's where your soul will guide you through your heart centre. So for me, it was always being the animals that bring me to the heart centre. And that's how I connect. When I'm, when I'm working as a medium, I sit in front of a client, I go into the heart centre. It's not the head. The head's nowhere with it. But the heart centre, I, I connect a bridge to the other person's heart. And I feel for the other person. I, I ask my guides to work with me and say, I want to feel what the other person's feeling. I want to go into their energy. I want to help that individual. And then all the information stored in the heart center, all the heartaches, everything they've gone through, the laughing, the giggling, the love experiences, it's also stored in the heart center because the heart feels it. And that's the soul center. Amy, so how can we help people to get out of their heads into the heart center or into being in the present moment what tips would you suggest because this is i know you're going to look at that tomorrow as well when you do your your event but what is it that we can give a little snippet of what you suggest start observing yourself yeah mm -hmm. so for me the biggest shift in my whole experience of this world and everything that i am was to start watching myself so I could see how I was in my head and verbalizing out loud. So I started having the, the thoughts that were running through my head. I made them real by speaking them out loud, like I was talking to the universe. So it then when you hear it out loud, it has a different impact. That you, you hear it differently and you start going, oh, my God, that's what I'm thinking. And I'm wondering why I'm thinking it. So it's really about, again, getting very, very present and becoming the observer of yourself rather than getting so involved and thinking everything that my head is saying is true. It's not. It's not. And when you slow down a little bit and just step back and allow yourself to watch yourself in situations, it's like, why am I responding like this in this relationship? Why am I showing up like this in this relationship? 
and just slowing down enough to watch yourself. You will learn so much. It's a learning process, right? It's like to unlearn how we were, we have to kind of practice something different. And the only way we can do that is if we can really see it. And the only way to see it is if we step out of the head and allow ourselves to understand that our head doesn't control us. We control it. I love what you've just said, Amy.